Hello, everyone. I'm Tracy Sisko with the Chicago Justice Project. Welcome to the inaugural episode of a new stream of content to our channel called Alt-Right Justice Report. Here we focus on alt-right agendas behind some of the political rhetoric in Chicago, regardless of whether the rhetoric comes from liberal, conservative, or clearly identifiable member of the alt-right. To make it clear, we are focusing on the rhetoric rather than the alleged political affiliations of the persons themselves. This is important because so many so-called Democrats in Chicago are actually just hard-right conservatives at a minimum. Clearly, the current governing regime of the Fraternal Order Police, the Chicago's largest police unions, has made a hard right turn from very conservative, espousing the worst of alt-right rhetoric. Most notably, comparing the city's COVID vaccines to Nazi Germany and initially supporting insurrectionists at U.S. Capitol that didn't do anything violent. So for our inaugural show, we are taking a look at one supposed Democrat who has for a long time now used alt-right rhetoric when it comes to policing and justice issues, former gubernatorial and mayoral candidate Paul Ballas. In the years leading up to the 2023 mayoral's race in Chicago, his rhetoric around Chicago public schools and the Chicago Police Department started to move to the extreme right. Oddly enough, while the rhetoric on both issues moved to the far right, in the case of the schools, he's very anti-union, and in the case of the police, he's very pro-union. Why, you might ask? while his wife's a retired police officer and his son's a current police officer. I know it's shocking to see Paul is pro-union when it benefits his family, but anti-union for just about everyone else. On today's episode, I want to focus on a PC wrote for the Alt-Right Illinois Policy Institute. Entitled, Chicago Police Overtime Costs $126 million Plus Cost of Burnout. Let's take a look at the uninformed, purely alt-right rhetoric used in this piece. First, fewer officers is a major factor in why there's been an over 50% drop in annual arrests since 2019 and an abysmal clearance rate of only 5% for non-fatal shootings with arrests, but not arresting people for shootings. We'll get back to that. More arrests equal better, right, Paul? See, you're not looking at quality. You're just looking at numbers totally uninformed, drives bad policing, drives quotas, drives must-have numbers. Next, he says the CPD only clears 5% of non-fatal shootings with arrests. Numbers in isolation usually look mean looking at other years is not favorable to political rhetoric being used. He looked at 19 forward. Maybe some level of clearances in years prior to the drop in officers. Maybe you look at that. Maybe it's the same. Maybe it's worse. Maybe those years look good. He has no idea, nor does he care. Alt-right rhetoric doesn't require facts. Also, if you're a subscriber to our Patreon, you, know, you would know that the CPD switched in 2015 from pursuing gun offenders to, pers to pursuing those who possess an unregistered weapon. Oh, this might have something to do with your numbers here. It, it just might. Context matters. More Paul. To Johnson supporters who believe they can defund the police by night, by not filling police vacancies, think about it. The hidden costs are eating the savings. Last year, police overtime cost the city over $210 million, over 50% more than was paid in 2021, and double what the city budgeted. The city's budgeted number is total crap for everything. Here's what's missing, though, ladies and gentlemen. How much does hiring the officer's Paul is calling for? What does that cost the city? It's nowhere to be found in this piece because he doesn't want to talk about it. In fact, it is never found in any of the alt-right rhetoric about police staffing. They just don't care. The number is meaningless to them. In our 2013 study, we found that the cost of CPD, cost to the CPD for employing an additional 1,000 officers for just the first 10 years of their employment would be over $693 million in salary, over $371 million in benefits, for a total cost of over $1.6 one billion sixty four million plus you never hear that number mentioned in the alt-right rhetoric and remember ladies and gentlemen those numbers are from a decade ago there's been a couple of union contracts with raises in there so it's even more now next a pledge of allegiance of sorts back to the paul right now the city has no plan for rebuilding police strength a plan must be must both slow the exodus of officers and make being a cpd officer attractive again 
It will require CPD leadership that has the confidence of the rank and file that will institute a human and predictable schedule. I agree with that. And showcases public support for the police by the mayor's office. Paul, everyone must bow to the police. Is it okay to question all other departments of government, say like teachers, but not the police? Don't do that. They must never be questioned. Never, ever mention the word accountability. Paul also has ideas for recruiting, including this gem. Aggressively recruiting members from the military and allowing testing online for service members who are on military bases and serving overseas. Despite all that has happened in America over the last several years, Paul cannot get away from his lust to continue to militarize the police. He's so very confident about a topic he knows nothing about. It's a consistent theme in alt-right rhetoric. Chicagoans know there's a severe, back to Paul, Chicagoans know there's a severe shortage of officers and, is, and it is hitting these, those least able to cope. I'm so sick of this bullshit line. Someone in goddamn Chicago media ask a goddamn follow-up question. What are we short from, Paul? Is that a hard question? This is also another consistent theme in the rhetoric. In Chicago, nobody knows how many officers we need. Nobody. Nobody wants to do a staffing analysis to determine the number with science. The last one was done in maybe 2011, and it wasn't really done well. The FOP doesn't want to know, the police union, because they are worried the number will come lower and, than they would like. The CPD doesn't want to know because they worry, they worry the number will come out higher. The alt-right rhetoric lies on a budgeted number, just under 14,000 officers. Through sources, we know that number was not based on science. It was hammered out in political meeting between the CPD, then CPD Superintendent Phil Klein and older persons. It's a political number. It's not a science-based number. It should not be used as the number the CPD needs. They have no idea how many officers the CPD actually really needs. They just know what's in the budget and they're guaranteed that number and they want that number when they budgeted from 10 years ago. The alt-right doesn't care. They just want more officers, more officers, more officers. That is why their rhetoric is devoid of fact and why it's so dangerous. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Please hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. I'll be back with you very soon.